Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be going over and showing you how to install the Tecancha P3 Prodigy Trailer Brake Controller here on a 2018 Honda Pilot. So this is what our brake controller looks like installed on our vehicle here. Now we do have some freedom in regards to mounting, but the best place and I would say the vast majority of the time we're going to be mounting them about where our right knee would be. So I have the seat in a normal position, I have my foot on the brake and the gas here. As you can see, I'm about six foot. I still have plenty of room here with my leg. I don't have to worry about hitting that brake controller. So although it does take up a little bit of room, I don't really see that being a problem for most people. So if you are a taller person and you do want some more leg room, we can actually easily remove this braking controller due to the mounting system here. So say we're not towing most of the time, we probably don't want the brake controller down there. Keep in mind, we will lose all of our presets if we pull power to it, but it's still gonna give us much more room and it's super easy. Simply lift up on these two tabs on the outside. We can pull the brake controller off and then we can just release the tabs from the back to remove our brake controller completely. And we'd obviously just tuck this wiring harness up under the dash here. But this is how we could have our vehicle set up when we're just riding around town and not towing. So again, keep in mind, if we do pull power from the brake controller each time we wanna remove it from the vehicle, we will lose our factory presets. What I mean by that is, the Decontra Prodigy allows you to store settings for a few different trailers. So if we just wanna get in each time and have everything set up for that trailer, we would just simply select that. We would need to go through that process again if we did pull power from the unit. But really the choice is up to you, whether you want the added leg room or you want the convenience of saving your trailer settings. So one of the great things about the P3, it's super customizable and there's tons of settings we can play with to really suit everything for our particular application. So here's gonna be the main screen when we don't have a trailer plugged in. Now, if we wanna go through some of the settings in the menu option, we'll hit this bottom in the bottom right, this button in the bottom right. We can use the up and down arrows to go through our settings. So this is the display setting. If we hit okay on that, you can see where we can change the brightness of the backlight. So if we're driving at night, we may wanna put that down to low so it's not blinding us. Well, if it's super bright in the daytime, maybe we need to bump that up a little bit to give us better visibility. But once we select the brightness, we can hit OK. It comes preset to normal. So if we hit that again, we can actually go ahead and select our brake type. So this brings up a good point about the Prodigy P3. It's really one of the top of the line brake controller options on the market. So if you have a trailer with electric over hydraulic brakes, meaning the brakes are actually hydraulic and it's controlled by electric actuator, a lot of brake controllers are not actually compatible with this type of braking system. The P3, however, is. So all you would need to do is go down to brake type and then select that option. Electric brakes, just standard or hydraulic. Confirm that. Go back to our settings. Most trailers are electric, so that's where we're gonna leave it. So keep in mind when we don't have a trailer plugged in, you will see that screen flash. So if we go further into displays, another cool unique feature of the P3, we can actually change the color of the backlight. You can see all the options we have for that here. So once we plug in a trailer, this is the screen we're gonna be prompted with. So before we take off down the road, we do wanna adjust the settings for one of our trailers here. Now, if we have multiple trailers, we talked about it a little bit earlier, but we can actually store those settings into the unit here, up to five different trailers. And basically what you're gonna be storing is the output, which you can see is easily adjustable using these arrows on the side here. So for our heavier trailers, we're obviously gonna want a little bit more braking force, whereas opposed to just our lighter trailers, we don't want them locking up every time we stop. So we can easily adjust the output here, hit okay to save that. But this is pretty much gonna be what the screen looks like while we're driving down the road. So on the bottom of our unit here, I'm sure you're familiar with this. It's a standard manual override feature sends full power to the brakes depending on what setting we have. And it's obviously gonna work with our brake pedal as well. Keep in mind, this is a proportional brake controller. So when we are just testing it sitting still, we shouldn't see much power at all. That's completely normal. We do get a lot of questions about that. People step on the brakes. They say, oh, I'm only getting 1.9. That's because we're sitting still. It's a proportional brake controller. So it's not gonna send that much power. So in regards to choosing an electric brake controller for your vehicle here, if your trailer has electric brakes, we're obviously gonna need a brake controller to activate them. Now keep in mind, when you're installing an electric brake controller on your vehicle, you will need to have a seven-way in place. 
Now, there is an option for this vehicle to come with a factory seven way, but if you don't, we have options to get you set up with one. But once we get that seven way on there, we can choose a brake controller. Now, the Decontra Prodigy P3, it's an excellent option. It's probably one of the most highly regarded brake controllers on the market. It's been around for a long time and it's super durable. So it's actually what's known as a proportional brake controller. So there's kind of two main types here. We have the time delay brake controllers and we have the proportional brake controllers. So time delay is a little bit older technology and basically how that works is there's gonna be a little bit of a delay between when we step on our brakes and when the brakes ramp up on the trailer. With the proportional brake controller, like the P3, we're not gonna have that issue at all. Our brakes are gonna come on immediately as soon as we press them. Furthermore, since it's proportional, the amount of braking force that's sent to our trailer is gonna be relative to how we're applying the brakes in the vehicle. So say we really slam on a stop here, we're on the highway, somebody cuts in front of us, we really need to come to a fast, slow, effective stop, and we really press on those brakes, we're gonna get a ton of braking force sent to our trailer. Now, as opposed to when we're just moseying around in town, we're just coming to a stop at a stoplight. We definitely don't wanna lock up the brakes on our trailer, so we're just gonna to come to a smooth, slow, effective stop. So if you're familiar with heavy duty towing, you'll be glad to know that the P3 has integrated boost settings. We have three different settings, B1, B2, and B3. As you can see there, we have a letter followed by a numeric value here in the top right hand corner of the screen. And we can easily toggle through those with the button here. We can turn it off, or we can go to one, two, or three. So last but not least, the P3 has internal safeguards as well as internal troubleshooting codes. Now what I mean by this is in regards to these safeguards, it's not uncommon to have issues with the wiring on your trailer and sometimes those can carry over to the vehicle and cause problems if you're not properly set up. But with the P3, it's gonna act as sort of an intermediate between the trailer and the vehicle. It's gonna stop any issues from the trailer affecting our vehicle here. And if there is an issue, we have these easy to read troubleshooting codes that's gonna allow us to quickly identify and fix that. So the first step of our installation, we need to find a place to mount our brake controller. Now, it doesn't exactly matter where we put this. There are a few things we need to keep in mind. The orientation of the brake controller, it can be like that or it can be like that, but we can't have it pointed side to side. So the angle or degree rather doesn't matter but the orientation as far as that way goes does. It needs to be parallel with the direction of travel. So there's not a ton of places in this vehicle here, but I would say more often than not where we end up mounting these things is gonna be a right around where your right knee would sit. So somewhere in there, you usually don't have too many issues. Some people like to mount them over here on the left-hand side, but you can actually hit your knee on that quite often getting in and out of the vehicle. So the optimal place for the vast majority of vehicles is gonna be right over here. So once we have the correct location, we can choose between our two mounting brackets. So this is more of the traditional mounting bracket. It simply screws into the bottom of the dash with those two holes there, and then we attach it to the brake controller with the side. So the other mounting bracket is the one that we have attached here, and also used in conjunction with this little piece. So this is the piece that actually gets screwed into the dash, but what I like about this option here is you can actually easily remove the brake controller from this little pocket shell by simply just popping it out like that. So if you see yourself to be removing the brake controller, maybe just to give you a little bit more room when you're not towing, this is definitely the way to go. Regardless, I would probably recommend this option. So what we're gonna do now is, since we're using this set of brackets, we're gonna take this little bracket here, we're gonna take two of the self-tapping screws here, and we're just gonna fix that into position over here where our right knee would be. So once we get a good location here, we're about where our right knee would be, directly below the steering column, sort of to the right side on this panel here. You wanna make sure you peel that panel back to make sure you don't have anything behind there. We just have some metal brackets which shouldn't get in the way. So we'll go ahead and attach our bracket now. So we're gonna to wanna to leave one of them kind of loose until we get the other one in, and then we can snug them both down. Make sure you have the correct angle. So now we're gonna take our brake controller out of our bracket here, and then these two little prongs here are gonna slide between the two flanges on that metal bracket we just mounted. Then in your kit here, you're gonna get these two screws that look like this. One will go on each side once you line up the holes. 
So you don't want to tighten down these two screws fully until you get the correct angle. So this bracket can actually pivot inside that metal bracket until you can get the correct viewing angle. Now you're just going to want to play with it a little bit while you're sitting in the driver's seat until you can get to where you can see everything and you can reach the controls. And then once you do get it in the perfect spot for you, then you can go ahead and just snug up those two screws on the side. So now we'll just take our brake controller and simply slide it into the bracket and press it up until we hear it lock into place. So now that we have the brake controller mounted, the next thing we need to do is address the wiring. So for this particular vehicle here, our Honda Pilot, we're gonna have two different options and it's gonna be based on whether or not our vehicle came equipped with the factory seven-way trailer connector. Now, the good news is if your vehicle did come equipped with the factory seven-way trailer connector, we are gonna need an additional harness. It's gonna be this Deconcha one you see here. And this is basically a plug and play adapter this end here plugs into the back of our brake controller. And then this other end here with the gray connector, that's gonna plug into a tow package port under the dash on the vehicle. And we'll show you that in a little bit. But the other option here is the hardwire harness. Now this one actually comes with your brake controller. So this is gonna be for models that don't come equipped with the factory seven-way trailer connector. Because if you don't have the factory seven-way trailer connector, chances are you're not gonna have that tow package port under your dash. Therefore, you'd actually need to hardwire in the brake controller. So this method, it's a little bit more involved, admittedly, and you will need some additional parts, such as a four-way and a four to seven-way adapter. We carry both of those here at e-trailer. But just a general rundown, for the hardwire application, this red wire here, this goes to the stoplight switch circuit, the cold side of that. You'll need to splice into a wire on the actual brake pedal. The blue wire here, this is the brake output circuit. This is gonna run to the seven way on the back of your vehicle. The white wire is a ground. That'll simply be attached to the negative battery terminal or just a suitable ground within the vehicle. And then finally, the black wire is for power. This will actually attach to the positive terminal on the battery with a circuit breaker in between. Now, if you order the e-trailer four to seven way adapter kit, it's gonna come with all the rest of the connections you need to install this. But for this particular application, luckily it has the factory seven way. So we're just gonna simply be using this plug and play harness. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take this black connector here. We're simply gonna plug that into the back of our brake controller. So we went ahead and just took our brake controller out of the pocket so we can show you this connection a little better. But here's what it looks like on the back of the brake controller and it literally only goes in one way. So you really can't mess this up. Just push it into here at click. Now we'll go ahead and slide the brake controller back in our mounting bracket. So now the other end here of our harness with that gray connector, that's gonna go to the factory port. So the locations for the factory port as far as on the vehicle side, these can vary slightly, just a little bit. For our particular one, it's gonna be right over here next to our emergency brake pedal. So we have this little panel here that has the hood latch release, and it's actually gonna be right up in that area there. It's gonna simply match the end of that connector, so pretty much the male side or the female side of this connector is what we're gonna be looking for. We'll try to give you a little bit better view of that now. So right between my two fingers up here, it may be kinda of hard to see, but we pretty much just have that same gray connector that matches the end of the one we just showed you. So what we're gonna do now, we're just gonna reach up under the dash there and just connect this to our aftermarket harness. So once we have our connection made, it's kind of hard to reach up there, but with a little bit of patience, you guys should be able to get it no problem. You can see we have some extra harness here hanging down where our pedals would be. That's obviously not good, so we'll go ahead and just take a couple zip ties. We'll just tie it up under the dash there to some existing wiring. So once we plug in the harness to our brake controller, this is the screen we should see. This is just the home screen here. You can see we have this nice backlight up here, displays to Concha P3. So if you don't get this screen here, basically if the brake controller doesn't power on once we plug in the harnesses, we're gonna need to check under the hood for some fuses and we can show you why now. So if we come under the hood here, we're gonna locate the fuse box cover, which looks like this. It's located right here on the back side of the firewall. So we're gonna have three little tabs, two on the bottom, one on the top. We'll depress those and we can remove this. So if we look on the center section of fuses here, if your brake controller doesn't power on, chances are you're gonna be missing this outside 20 amp pier and this outside 20 amp pier. So these are micro fuses. And again, if your brake controller doesn't power on, 
you'll need to go ahead and insert a 20 amp fuse into each of these locations. Now for our particular application, our brake controller didn't turn on while we plugged everything in. So we actually did need to take two 20 amp fuses. Keep in mind these don't come in your kit, but you can find them at most local auto parts stores. Now if you want to get this done ahead of time before you order your brake controller, then you will want to come up here and check just to make sure you have those two fuses. If not, just simply run to the store, pick a couple up, they're very cost effective. And that's going to do it today for our look and installation of the Takancha Prodigy P3 trailer brake controller here on a 2018 Honda Pilot.